Hello everyone and welcome back to the MedBoys channel. My name is Rushal and today we're going to be going over how you can score a 130 plus on the biological and biochemical foundations of living system section on the MCAT. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and let's go. You obviously need to know bio and biochem really well if you want to become a doctor. This is why 30% of the MCAT is based upon these two subjects and it makes up the whole third section. Therefore, you need to study from the best resources. For the textbooks, we use the bio and biochem Kaplan 7 book set and we use the Maldon Enki deck for more content review. And we recommend you check out the one month and two month study schedule that we created for more specifics. And we also used UWorld and AMC for more practice questions. We're going to break down our study strategies into seven tips. So if you want to get the full understanding of how we approach the section, be sure to watch till the end. The first tip we have is how to approach any bio or biochem passage with the best strategy possible. It's to read the question before the passage. A lot of the times you can read the question and get the answer straight away. You don't even need the passage. And AMC is just trying to trick you. So don't fall into their trap and read the question first. So you're going to save a lot more time that you can dedicate to things that are much harder later down in the section. This simple strategy took me from a 125 to a 129. Next, focus on the high yield content and don't worry too much about the specific details in each chapter. But no, the MCAT can test literally anything. Well, yes, theoretically it can, but you don't need to answer every single specific question right to get over 130. Sometimes knowing the most high yield content and the content that is tested the most can get you the most marks. If you don't know what high yield content is, let's go over some topics. First up are the amino acids. You know that big chart of the 20 different amino acids? Yeah, you're gonna have to memorize that entirely because I guarantee you'll see at least three to four questions on your real MCAT just asking you to identify them. Next up, there are a few body systems that show up on the MCAT a lot more than the other systems. So make sure you know a lot about the excretory system or anything that has to do with the kidney because it will make an appearance on your MCAT. In addition, it's also wise to spend more time on the endocrine and the nervous system because those are very high yield and will show up on your MCAT for sure. Lastly, you must know all the cycles from biochemistry. And yes, I said all the cycles from biochemistry and I cannot stress this enough. Glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, glycogenolysis, glycogenesis, Krebs cycle, pentose phosphate pathway, all of these cycles are very easy marks on two sections of the MCAT and you would just be letting them go if you don't memorize them. So a tip to memorizing them would be to draw them every single day on a whiteboard or an iPad or something every night so that you can instill it in your memory. If you want a document with all the cycles in it, we actually created it and it's in our description. So you could just use that and practice with it every single night. Now keep in mind that this isn't an exhaustive list. These are only some of the high yield topics that you need to know. If you want a complete list, you should go through your Kaplan books and identify what is labeled as high yield. Trust me, if you go through those topics in as much detail as you can, you're going to thank yourself. Moving on, I know we just talked about memorizing the cycles, but that's only for the cycles. For the rest of the content, you need to understand it, not memorize it. Yes, what your bio teacher said all along is true and you need to follow this. This is because if you're just memorizing these facts and not truly understanding them, you're not going to be able to apply them to the MCAT and you're going to end up getting questions wrong. You don't want that, do you? Many people struggle whenever there's graphs or tables in each passage. And this can be intimidating and confusing. And trust me, we understand. But there's a lot of ways to get better at this. You could try to read a scientific article every single day. Uh, whenever you're taking a break or something, you could just try to look at what the graphs are trying to say. And this will help you become more confident in your scientific analysis. If you're having trouble identifying or understanding what certain graphs or figures mean, I like to use the question method. So for this, I take one part of the graph, for example, let's say the y-axis, and I ask myself what it means. I do this for each individual element of the figure until I've understood every single part of it individually. 
Then I move on to understanding the relationships between individual elements. And there you go, you've understood the figure, the small picture and the big picture. Another very useful strategy is that I use diagrams to my advantage. I am someone who learns primarily from reading and writing but by using diagrams, I really intermingle these different learning styles because looking at diagrams is a visual way of learning and that helps me with retention greatly. So it's improved my retention a lot and I'd recommend the same to you. Active recall is something we've mentioned time and time again if you've watched our previous videos, but we're mentioning it here now because it's so important. Active recall is essentially testing yourself on the concepts that you've studied. For example, you can go through your Enki flashcards, this is a great way of using active recall, or you can explain concepts out loud to yourself so that you understand them as much as possible. You can even do practice questions to enhance your active recall. Whatever you do, make sure that you fully understand the concept before you move on to active recall, because you need to establish a solid base. We found that for the biology and biochemistry section especially, Active recall was super important for remembering all the details of the organ systems. Our last and most important tip is, drumroll please, is to use mnemonics. Mnemonics are the easiest way to remember pretty difficult information and try to frame it in a way that you can remember untested. To give you an example, one of the most popular types of mnemonics is list order acronym. If you remember the colors of the rainbow as Roy G. Bibb, you're doing it. In the context of bio and biochemistry, one of the most useful mnemonics that we used to memorize the citric acid cycle was our city is kept safe and sound from malice. Now the first letter for each of these words is the first letter of each substrate in the citric acid cycle. Just remember, the key to a mnemonic is that it connects the information in a way that it's very easy to remember and test it. So just experiment and see what works for you. And there you have it. If you found this information useful, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next Monday.